guys, welcome back to my channel, thank you for stopping by. So today I have a manga wrap up for you all and this is all the manga that I read for the past month or two, mostly this month since I got back home but spoiler alert, all the manga series that I'm going to talk about today are series that I recommend as yeah you guys already know my manga collection is investment to my happiness so I tend to pick up series that I know I'm going to enjoy or I'll probably love already but you know some series are just a vibe like before even picking up you know it's just for you and this this is a quite a healthy stack, not gonna lie. And yeah, I'm really excited to share my opinions with you all and let you guys know like my ratings of it. But to be honest, all of these are solid nine out of tens, probably even 10 out of tens. And yeah, just looking at it, I haven't got a series that I dislike at all. So um, yeah. <laughs> I think you guys already know what type of reader I am as well. So with my lovely stack of manga, I'll say this is pretty much an all-rounder wrap-up as I have Shonen, Shoujo, Jose, Seinen series, romance, fantasy, tearjerkers, like everything you can think of is in this pile. And yeah, I had a really great month of reading manga. Like there is definitely some gems and yeah, I can't wait to share with you all. Before we get into this video, please give this video a like, comment and subscribe you know the drill. Click on the bell and feel free to use my affiliate links down below for Blackwell's Amazon and Right stuff if you want to help support this channel and its future giveaways and yeah let's get started out of all the manga wrap-ups that I've done on my channel so far I feel like this has to be the best stack as all the manga that I read this month has been top-notch chef kiss but yeah the first series that I read was Hell's Paradise so you guys probably saw this in my recent hauls where I picked this up on Travelling Man. I'm just gonna move this stack of manga on my shelf as I feel like it's just blocking the camera so let me just put this aside. Hopefully you guys don't mind the angle change as I felt like sitting like this is a lot more comfier as I can lean my back and I just want this video to be comfy and chill like all my other manga wrap ups. But yeah, first off right off the bat we have Hell's Paradise Volume 1. This is a series that is completed in Japan. I'm pretty sure this is going to complete very soon in English, either the end of this year or the end of next year. I'm not too sure. Just Google when the last release date is for the last volume. But um, yeah, I do recommend you guys pick up this series as soon as possible though because this series is currently very popular so it is quite hard to get i did get my volume one from traveling man but yeah i do have you probably see at the top here i do have vol oh my fairy lights i do have volume three five six seven eight so i'm currently missing volume two and four at the moment but hopefully i can pick those other volumes up but yeah first impression wow this series i don't know what i was expecting i had a live stream earlier this month with Geeky Dreams and Kitchens as manga and Geeky Dreams basically gave a breakdown of what this series is about and you know me, I have a memory of a fish so I didn't even remember what she said other than that there's a lot of gore and it was gruesome and people in the comment section were saying that this series really doesn't hold back and yeah this is definitely rated as a mature read and it makes sense this series is graphic, it's beautiful, I'll show you some pages actually but um Oh, actually, I don't know if it's too much for YouTube, as some of the stuff is just too graphic, in my opinion. But, um, let me just find a page. Okay, I think this page is pretty decent, so... If you can see the art style it is gorgeous and I just want to show you some stuff from the island like here if you can see like just the scenery and that stuff but yeah this series is about this main guy who is called Gabimaru the Hollow and he's an assassin and because of a betrayal he was sentenced to you know death and get beheaded and during his execution he was scouted to escape his death sentence to basically help a shogun to find an elixir in some weird island and um that elixir can make the shogun immortal but yeah this series is absolutely beautiful as i showed you guys the pages earlier but it is super graphic and um yeah i'm really interested to see where the story goes i just want to find out more about the island like all the mystery that's behind it i want to see who survives on the island by the way there are other assassins that got scouted as well to go to this um hidden island and um it's a bit messed up you can imagine there's 
basically a bunch of people that's trying to escape life sentences and go into this hidden island to find the elixir but since I said there's a bunch of people that's trying to escape their life sentences that doesn't mean everyone wants to find the elixir you know some people actually are there so they can get some freedom in it so they can just enjoy their killing spree and that so you can imagine it's basically a bloodbath in this hidden island and um, there's just so much mystery that I can't wait to read more hopefully from what I've said has intrigued you guys but yeah this is definitely a series that I didn't expect to collect but I'm super happy that I have this in my collection now and I'm definitely excited to read more this is more of a fantasy adventure series and definitely super graphic if you're into more of the action this is definitely for you but yeah that is volume one of Hell's Paradise next we have is to your eternity so this is by the same manga as a silent voice from what i heard before i read this series that this series is a tearjerker but personally i did read the first volume today actually and i did not cry but there are certain elements that it just makes you think oh, what a shame you know certain things that happen in the first couple chapters is like why i feel like it's not would I even call it a dark series? I definitely feel like this is a great fantasy series. Also what I love about it is that it's very good at storytelling. So yeah, it's definitely got me intrigued to read more of it and I have picked up more volumes of this series. But yeah, I'm gonna read the blurb as I have read this blurb many times but never sunk in. So I'm gonna just read it once more for any of you guys that are new that don't know much about this series as definitely, even though I've watched lots of reviews about this series, I just keep on forgetting what it is about other than that it's a tearjerker but yeah an orb was cast onto the earth after metamorphosing into a wolf he joins a boy on his bleak journey to find his tribe and learns and evolves transcending death even when those around it cannot so those last two lines are definitely very deep as the first few chapters of this volume was about an orb coming onto earth then just basically evolving into a wolf and then he meets a boy and it's a very sad first story not gonna lie and then the second part of the story focuses on a girl and um yeah it is really great and i'm super excited to read more of it this is definitely very different from what i have in my collection definitely really enjoyed the first volume of to your eternity and it's just nice to see another manga series from the same manga as a silent voice as that series definitely is a tearjerker you probably actually you can't see it at the top here that series definitely a silent voice it has to be one of my favourites as it's very great at storytelling. Another thing, it tackles like societal issues. But yeah, it's just nice to see another series from the same manga. And I'm really excited to see where this series goes. As yeah, from what I've read so far, it is definitely worth picking up and it's worth the hype. The only downside is that this series is quite expensive as it's published by Kodansha. So a lot of the volumes cost around like £10.99. So the next series I've read is Astora and this is the first series I've ever read by Naoki Urasawa and not gonna lie I feel like this is a great series into his works as I haven't read anything other than Astora from him and I really do want to dive into his other series like Monster, 20th Century Boys but those series are nowadays it's quite hard to find. Um, I'm still struggling to find 20th Century Boys Volume 1. I think Monster Volume 1 recently had a reprint as recently i've been seeing a lot of people picking up volume one of monster but yeah hopefully i can get my hands on it as well soon um but we'll have to see how the budget is going as you guys know i'm going back to uni so money's a bit tight but this series wow i'm definitely picking up volume three once it comes out in the uk how i got along with astora i must say i haven't read any series like it so it was definitely very refreshing to read and since i haven't read anything by naoki udasawa this was definitely a surprise as I don't know anything about his works other than, yeah, he has some popular series in the community. But other than that, I don't really know what his art style is like, his storytelling is like. And I gotta say, it's just...
just wow like 100% this is a 9 out of 10 probably even a 10 out of 10 to be honest um, but yeah with Asadora volume 1 it starts off with introducing Asa who has many siblings and that and normally people forget who she is as her family is such a big one but yeah one day she accidentally gets kidnapped and um, I think a typhoon hit or something but basically it's not a typhoon you find out later more in like volume 2 but um, basically long story short there was a big accident and I will compare it more to a tsunami so a lot of houses was washed out a lot of families were separated and Asa was the one that was like we need to help feed these people you know we need to give them rice we need to give them water and she's basically being a big boss you know at her age I think I don't know how old she was at actually in volume one so I'm just gonna flick through some pages to show you guys what the art style looks like but yeah there is some color pages and what I love about this series is the quality of the manga like the paper is definitely a bit different than usual and also I do love a good flap with my manga um, but yeah it's definitely really nice but yeah I really like how the series look very very different from what I have in my collection but yeah this series is super interesting volume one definitely got me hooked but when it got to volume two now this is the volume that got me wanting more like volume one got me hooked but volume two is like i need the next volume now and yeah this made me want to collect the series i feel like if you want to get into an ongoing series of naoki urasawa definitely pick up asadora as it's just very different in my opinion compared to his other series even though i haven't read it yet you can just tell by the vibe this is definitely up my alley a bit more yeah, I'm super excited to read more of this series, but yeah, this is solid 9 to 10 out of 10. So I was just checking the weather for tomorrow since I'm moving to uni and it is 80% raining. So um, good luck to me and my mum and my auntie moving all my crap. So <laughs> anyway, next series that I read is Requiem of the Rose King. So this is a series that I was mentioning in the intro where it just needs a bit of hype and love in the community, okay? Let me try and give you guys my best shot in hyping the series up because wow just wow this series is chef kiss and i have hyped this series quite a lot on my channel already however how come no one talked about from volume 7 onwards huh no one has talked about it i feel like they have done the same thing as me where i've saved this series as this series release does take a while as volume 13 got released last year november and then volume 14 is releasing this year november so it's been a whole year you know since um the last release of the last volume so yeah this series does have a slow release so that's why I've been savouring all my volumes to take my time to read them. However, like I've said, how come no one talked about from volume 7 onwards? Because, wow. Okay, let me just give you guys a breakdown of this series. As a lot of people probably don't know about this series a lot. Other than that it is compared to Game of Thrones quite a lot of the time. Which I've done. But... This series, man, it's political. It's got historical elements. It is just freaking amazing the fantasy is amazing the art style is amazing and the sauciness yeah no one ever talked about the sauciness right because they probably haven't read after volume 7 because this series wow from volume 7 onwards is where the story really picks up in my opinion and <sighs> you're just not ready for the heat the spiciness that goes on the politics the madness that goes on like literally this series i feel like i'm not even explaining it other than giving you guys adjectives but yeah let me give you guys a breakdown so so from volume one to six of recommend the rose king it gives you the breakdown of the story the plot the characters the houses as like i said this is very similar to game of thrones so there is different houses so different politics different kings and queens and that stuff and people trying to take over the throne so that is the first volume one to six and also a bit of like explaining about rich's problems also from volume one to six the story focuses on the character development and it is very much needed for all those six volumes as so much things goes on like there is death there is like i said it's very political so do expect some deaths and um 
just so much goes on from volume one to six however volume seven is where the plot just hits you like this like definitely is 180 turn or 360 degrees turn whatever you describe it however you want to say it i'm not too sure from volume seven onwards it really does play with your mind and it does keep you on your toes like every volume that i read from volume seven i was on my tiptoes when i was reading it and um let me just show you the like volume covers you can see how beautiful the volume covers are but yeah you do see some action with richard as well i know that's what i'm saying saucy saucy this series is rated for older teen and look how good buckingham looks like he is gorgeous like damn he's too gorgeous to be honest and catsby he's another favorite of mine in the series i'll say the main three characters that are my favorite in the series would have to be catsby Buckingham and Richard of course I do like Anne Anne is my favorite cover art actually for the series this is volume 8 and yeah this is just a fabulous series it is a dark fantasy shoujo so I feel like since this series is considered a shoujo a lot of people don't pick it up but to be honest yo you lot that guys you need to pick this series up this is fabulous you know this is this is all the action adventure saucy sauciness that you need in a series like this is just chef kiss you know and yeah i feel like because this series is considered a gender bender in a way and also just a shoujo a lot of people kind of shy away from this series but literally pick this up pick this up it's so worth every penny and it's not even that expensive as it is published by biz so you probably can get a free for two from forbidden planet the reason why i feel like this series hasn't got the hype that it deserves even though it's coming out with an anime later this year it's because i feel like some people haven't read this series up to date yet like i was as i was savoring this series a lot so that's why i took my time with my volumes but i'm telling you if you haven't read volume 7 onwards you are not ready okay Okay, I don't want to gas up too much okay but I'm just saying you guys are not ready and this series is 100% worth picking up like this is too good and this is 100% a 10 out of 10 series in my collection it might take some people a while to get into this series with the first few volumes but personally I was 100% hooked straight away from volume one so um if people told me that later on this series will get even better I 100% would have read this a lot quicker than I've done. So the next series that I read this month is Spy X Family Volume 4. So this is notoriously known in the community for being the best manga for a beginner. So yeah, this series is packed with adventure, comedy, just everything that you need. But yeah, Volume 4 was a very fun read as I like how they adopted this dog. This dog is super intelligent and you just it's just a fun volume to read. What I love about this volume and this series in general is that I just love all the shenanigans that the family gets themselves into. It's just so funny. Like this volume specifically was a very fun read and I'll show you some pages. But um, yeah, I just love the dog. The dog is so cute and intelligent and you just keep on loving the family the more you read the series. But yeah, that is volume four of Spy X Family. I feel like I don't need to say much since a lot of people already know what the series is about. But yeah, that is volume four. Next, I have Demon Prince of Momochi House volume five. I was planning to read the rest of this series actually, but I just felt like reading my other series. This series does have me hooked. So far with the story in volume five, it's quite interesting actually as Mari has to go to the spiritual realm as one of the sacred fours have become polluted and also the second part of the volume as well Himari also gets cursed so I was basically trying to find like a way to lift the curse and also Himari confesses her love for Aoi but Aoi rejects her so yeah there's quite a lot of things that goes on in volume 5 but I'm quite excited to read more of the volumes but I guess I have to wait until next month when I come back so the next series that I read recently is A Man and His Cat and this series is an absolute gem in my collection and I can't recommend it enough this is a solid 10 out of 10 and it's just so so good like it's so fluffy so heartwarming it's a bit bittersweet it just gets me in my feels let's be honest and I have shed a few tears reading this series I just don't know how to explain it like I just empathize with the character so much like even though I don't have a cat this series makes me want to have a cat and just cuddle with it it's just so so cute but yeah this series is about this old man who is a widower who adopts this cat this cat is normally seen as ugly as it has a 
mole right here but personally I find it super cute and even the old man finds it cute but yeah you just see their journey together like filling each other's void and just being there for one another like being each other's best friend is such a sweet series so the reason why this man adopted this cat is because before his wife passed away she always wanted a cat and now he thought it was the best opportunity to adopt a cat and it's just a sweet sweet story that I can't recommend enough do grab some tissues as you might cry it's not like sad 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 as this series is not super sad it's actually very fun it's just some parts you might be able to empathize with that might get you a bit teary if that makes sense but yeah that is a man's cat so the next series that i read recently is a recent jose that came out and that is harry's curse i haven't heard much people talk about this series but that's probably because it literally just came out and this was published by vertical and wow we just don't have enough jose series in the community let's be honest and i'm just glad this came out this is just perfecto like if any of you guys want a new jose series this is for you um i know the premise of this series might sound uninteresting for others or might be quite triggering. So just a quick breakdown of Haru's curse. So this series starts off at Haru's funeral and this is her older sister Natsumi and this is Haru's fiance and straight after the funeral these two start dating so the story sounds a bit complex and it sounds a bit messed up so I feel like some people might shy away from the series because of that but I promise you it's nothing like that it's not messed up at all I know from me explaining it it sounds messed up but trust me the way it's done it's just it made sense if that makes sense and um, yeah the story is just written beautifully and personally I feel like it's a great Jose there's some parts that deals with grief and deals with uh, resentment and that stuff but in my opinion it's done really well and um yeah i really recommend people to read this series definitely not what i expected but i'm really glad that vertical published this as i'm pretty sure this is a two volume series so i'm glad they did a thicken and yeah let me just show you some of the pages to show you guys the art style so as you can see it starts off with harry's funeral and yeah you just see like the things that they deal with i feel like this series does talk about grief in a very interesting way as well personally i feel like this is more of a fun series than a sad series but yeah that's harry's curse so the next series that i read recently is a sweat and soap volume six. Oh, that's the back <laughs> this volume was super sweet natori and asoko has already moved in now and this is super super sweet so i think valentine's day happens in this volume and also asoko's birthday there's just so many sweet stuff that happen and i just can't recommend this series enough this is a scene in romance so literally Actually, anyone can read this personally I feel like not enough people have read this series and I feel like this series is such a good investment in your collection it's such a healthy romance and there's nothing to dislike about this series in my opinion um but yeah it is a great smut series on top as well next I've read is volume 3 of a sign of affection and oh, wow Whew. this volume I think this has to be my favourite volume yet, to be honest. This is just so, so sweet. And I feel like with A Sign of Affection, the more you read, the more you want. And volume three just, it's just melt my heart. Basically, this volume, they start dating and I'm like, yes, punching the air because my man made it, you know. It's on me, you know. He's my husbando. I'm going to say it again. He's my husbando. I'm joking, I'm joking. We can share him. We can share him. But he's just amazing. And Yuki is just, oh, she's just a gem. I just love the dynamic between these two. As if you look at it, look how cute they look and how sweet and loving. Like, even the back, like, oh this series is gorgeous it's not just the art style that's gorgeous like the story the plot is so fluffy and it just makes you melt inside and happy and like i've said in my previous videos before like i haven't heard anyone dislike this series as of yet as there's literally nothing to dislike about and um yeah this is a fabulous series that i can't recommend enough either solid 10 out of 10 and the last series that i read recently is volume 6 and 7 of perfect world Oof volume seven boy i i enjoyed volume six but volume seven oh i need volume eight right now i just need it and it turns out i think they're releasing volume eight in october so definitely i will be picking up volume eight once it comes out but this series man i just can't believe that it's going to be completed soon as this is a 12 volume series i believe and it's already completed this year in japan or last year and wow 
This Jose series will pull your heartstrings. It deals with a relationship with an able-bodied person and someone that is disabled. And just the trials and tribulations that they go through in their relationships is just... Man, you sometimes have to think this world is a bit unfair, not gonna lie, but um, yeah, this series does pull my heartstrings. It's bittersweet. I, I just don't know. I'm just super invested in the series and I just need more. And the fact that this series is going to be complete soon, I feel like I'm gonna have withdrawal symptoms, same as Sweat and Soap, as this is already complete in Japan as well. Like, what am I gonna do with my life without Sweat and Soap and Perfect World? I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. <laughs> I think I might go in the corner and cry right now. Right now, I just feel like crying because these two men, they're meant to be together, okay? Let them be together. Oh, But from the cover arts of the last volume, not gonna lie, I spoiled myself. I'm pretty sure it's gonna have a happy ending. But um, yeah, oh, I just noticed my volume six is super, super dirty. And it also has a bit of a bump at the bottom I, I, I'm not too sure but it is what it is but yeah this series fantastic read 100% 9 to 10 out of 10 and yeah that is it for what I've read for the past month or two but yeah I do apologize for the lighting change as it did get dark quite quickly but yeah that is all the manga I read I hope you guys enjoyed this manga wrap up and I hope I did some justice to some of the series that I've hyped up as not gonna lie some of these series really deserve more love in my opinion but hopefully my opinion and my explanations came through and that you guys understood them but um yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video but yeah please give this video a thumbs up if you're new here subscribe comment down below and let me know what series you guys have been reading recently as i'm super interested in knowing what you guys read probably something that i can pick up as well but yeah i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys next week bye <laughs>